Isn't this cool? So like I lined up all the books that I wanted to haul right here. And now as we go through them, I'm gonna turn them around. I feel like it's aesthetic. Hey everyone, it's me again, Brittany, and I'm here today to film the part two to my ginormous books that I've acquired during quarantine haul. And I'm happy to say that this video is actually being sponsored by GlassesUSA.com. I was so, so excited when they reached out to partner with me again. Last year when I did my sponsorship with them, you guys absolutely loved it. And I always, always, always get questions on where my glasses are from and all the glasses I wear are basically from GlassesUSA.com. So I was pretty hyped that they wanted to do another one with me. GlassesUSA.com is an amazing online hub for you to buy your new glasses, whether it be prescription glasses or sunglasses, they have it all. They have over 6,000 pairs of both in-brand, such as Tato and designer brands like Ray-Ban. And you can basically add your prescription on to almost all of those glasses. Even better, you get it at a really affordable price. Sunglasses and prescription eyeglasses start at $30. That is including your prescription, a baseline prescription, prescription added onto the lenses. They're able to do this because Glasses USA actually cuts out the middleman, which makes it possible for them to be able to mark down these glasses to up to 70% off their retail price. And I know some people might be nervous to buy their glasses online. You never really know what they're going to look like in person. They do have this really fun feature called their virtual mirror and you basically take a picture and you line up some of the little circles with your eyes and then you get to try on virtually all of the different glasses that you might be interested in. I think the feature is super handy to see what will work well with your face shape and also just kind of like the general size of the glasses. But if you were still nervous there really is no need to be because it's actually a risk-free buy. GlassesUSA.com has free shipping and free returns and a no hassle 100% money back guarantee within the first 14 days of the delivery of your glasses and they even give you a warranty for your glasses for 365 days. So the risk is taken out quite a bit and you get to try out and own a bunch of new fun glasses. The ones that I'm actually currently wearing are the Atado Bologna but I actually got quite a few this time. I did get all of my glasses with the blue light blocking lens because because I'm sitting in front of a computer editing a lot. Also, I'm sorry about the lighting situation. This was this was difficult to figure out. I don't normally film with glasses on in my current living space because this room gets no light, so I always have to use a ring light and yeah. But these are the Atado Bolognas. I absolutely adore them. I got them in this like semi-transparent pink lens. I just think they're super cute. They're very different than what I normally wear. They're like oversized and slightly cat shaped. They're just so fun. Here, we'll get in nice and close. The next pair that I got are these, which are the Muse Wild glasses. I really, really, really was in love with these when I saw them. I used to have a pair of like tortoiseshell Ray-Bans that I loved and got stolen a long time ago and I never wanted to replace. So these ones really gave me that vibe. They have the tortoiseshell frame, but they have a really cool wooden side, which I thought was just such a fun detail to add. I got myself a new pair of these really cute transparent glasses glasses and these are bigger than the ones that I had before and they fit perfectly. I'm obsessed with these ones. They're so nice. I really like the glasses that have a thin frame that make it feel like you have something going on on your face but you can still see everything else behind it as well. And I don't know if I mentioned it but these are the Revel Nash glasses and they're just so cute. The last pair of prescription glasses that I got are these Tato Reynosa, Reynosa glasses. I I'm so into these. These are so me. I just, they have a really thin metal frame and they're like black on the lenses, but then gold on the other parts. I just think they're so cool and they add like a little bit of something, you know, without being too much. My nose is really delicate to heavy sunglasses and it feels like I can't breathe after a while. So having a frame like this is ideal. And for the last pair that I got, these ones unfortunately don't have my prescription in them, but aren't they freaking cool? <laughs> I'm a huge Ray-Ban fan. They are the Ray-Ban 2447s and they're just so cool. I just like, that's the only way I can think of to describe them. They have like a really nice like brown lens, which I adore. I really, really prefer brown lenses and sunglasses to black. And then they have like a really thin frame on the sides. I know I'm just going to be wearing these all the time. <laughs> Not for this video though, because they don't have my 
prescription I can't see right now. I think I'm gonna keep these ones on for the rest of the video, but who knows, maybe we'll switch it up. <laughs> so if you've been interested in checking out Glosses USA, or if you wanted to check out any of the glosses that I got today, please check my description bar below. There's gonna be a link to all of the glosses that I got, and also just a link to the website for you to check out. Thank you again to Glosses USA for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into the secondary haul, because this was like a glosses haul. Guys, you got two hauls in one. Look at you. I want to call this haul like a I gave in haul. Like books that I just, I wouldn't have got if it weren't for the situation, you know? Like if I'd not been so bored. So the first book on this list is going to be The Night Country by Melissa Albert. This is actually like on a soft part of my most anticipated releases for the year. I think it didn't make the cut for the video, but I wrote it into my journal. I really liked The Hazelwood last year when I read it. Even though I felt kind of like meh towards the end, I just really enjoyed like the fairy tale aspect and how we were drawn into the fairy tale. It's sort of like a little bit of a portal fantasy, but also kind of like a, a book that becomes real kind of fantasy or really, eh, it's hard to explain, but it did fall like slightly flat for me, which is why I wasn't terribly excited for when the night country came out. But look at how stunning this cover is. It's so beautiful. It's just that deep blue and it has that metallic peachy red foiling. It's beautiful. And I think that this isn't like a sequel. I think it's one of the stories from the hinterland. Oh no, no, no. It looks like it's mostly a sequel, but I think that she is making a hinterland story tale, which is exactly what I wanted when I finished The Hazelwood. That was like all I asked for and someone was like, yeah, she's actually doing that. But I ended up just kind of biting the bullet and getting the book. The next book that I got was Blood Witch by Susan Dennard. <sighs> Not much to be said about this. I have actually read it. I loved it. I want to reread this entire series physically because I listened to it audibly and I feel like I was pretty distracted for most of the books. So I definitely want to go in with a reread. I just love Susan Dennard's Witchlands. The world is phenomenal. Our characters are so complex and there's so many facets to them and it's a really cool story. I think that the magic system and the friendship aspects are the absolute best part about the Witchland series. I listened to Blood Witch and I didn't own the copy so I finally just kind of said might as well, you know? Now for another book that I've already read but I listened to it on audio and I didn't own a physical copy yet, Ghosts of the Shadow Market. I liked The Ghosts of the Shadow Market short story collection a lot. I didn't expect much out of it because I'd heard so many like mixed reviews about the Bane Chronicles. I loved this. Shadow Market specifically follows a few of the characters from Infernal Devices and also a little bit past the Infernal Devices and some of the characters that we are going to be following, I believe, in Chain of Gold. It was really, really cool. It was just really fun to see where their lives went after Infernal Devices. As you guys know, Infernal Devices is my favorite series, my favorite books that Cassandra Clare has written. I just think that the characters are they're the best. They're the best. They're my babies. So hearing more about their lives and kind of like some of the sadder points, but also some of the cooler points was really, really fun. And it definitely prepped me nicely to be excited for Chain of Gold. I had to get just a physical copy to add on to all my other metallic freaking spines. I need to find a way to split those off in my shelf because when I have just one whole shelf of metallic dark books, it just throws off the balance. The next book that I got was The Cheerleaders by Kara Thomas. I've actually wanted this book for for so long. Ever since Sophisticated Books had talked about this, I want to say like a year and a half to two years ago, I was instantly intrigued. I have read another book by Kara Thomas, which was Little Monsters, and I didn't feel very strongly towards it, but I didn't feel very negatively towards it either, so I was definitely willing to give her another shot. And when I heard that Sophisticated Books adored this, hers and my taste that wasn't proper grammar. Her taste and mine tend to line up pretty similarly, so I had put it on my list a long time ago and I finally was like, mm. This is a book that I have wanted to buy myself for years. I'm not kidding when I say years. Since the first movie came out and I read the first book, that's P.S. I Still Love You. And I kept putting it off and I would always miss like the deals that it would have on Amazon and then I'd be like, well, I'm gonna wait until the next deal. And I finally kind of just said, you know what? This is a really good price. I'm just gonna get it. I need to read the rest of the series and I haven't read it because I didn't own the second book. I know I could have listened to it on audio, but for some reason that just wasn't an option in my head. I watched the movie without reading the second book. Yeah, I didn't like that either. I literally had the first and last book. Just not this one. This next one's kind of a funny one. I actually bought A Broke Millennial by Aaron Lowry, and my boyfriend even saw it the other day, and he's like, can I read that book? And I'm like, 
Yes. I had actually listened to the Blink for this. If you guys saw my recent reads video, I talked about this app called Blinkist and I had been listening to some of their Blinks and one of them was this broke millennial one that I was so intrigued by that I felt that I needed to get the whole book because your girl's trying not to not to be a broke millennial like really I'm trying so hard I want to take these off because they touch them like the very tip of my nose and it's tickling while I talk these next two kind of go together but I'll do one at a time and that's gonna be emergency contact by Mary HK Choi and I like how I said I do one at a time and permanent record by Mary HK Choi so I'm not gonna lie <laughs> I put off buying these for a really long time. This cover was stunning and I wanted to get it right away, but then I heard so many mixed reviews of people just not really liking it. It basically has to do with this girl and a guy who don't really have any other people and they happen to meet each other and decide like, hey, do you wanna be my emergency contact? And like, it's a love story from there. But I didn't hear very positive things about it. And then Permanent Record came out and this cover, like, like, that's so cool. And I really wanted to get it, but then when I was adding it to my cart, I saw this one just sitting there lonely being like, you're gonna get the other one, but not me because of the cover. I see you, and so I got both of them. Yeah, I'm gonna give it my own shot. I'm so excited about this next one. So I got Slay by Brittany Morris. I'm so hyped. It sounds like such a fun, amazing story. We're following a very young, young coder who has created this amazing video online video game that was meant mostly for black people and she has kind of kept it a secret that she's the actual coder for it but when things go down and terrible people start to say that the game is being biased against them and i mean it's really not they're just they're just being rude. She's kind of like caught in this weird position where she doesn't know how to feel because obviously her name isn't out there and she isn't being exposed for being the one to make the game, but also she wants to defend her game because these people are making kind of out there claims. I'm excited. Plus look at the cover. Look at the cover. It's just so many pretty colors. I guess I didn't haul this one in my last one, but I thought I did when I hauled the other books that I'd gotten myself from Book of the Month. And that's A Good Marriage by Kimberly McWright. This is uh, one of their Book of the Month picks that I had added to my cart to add on my two extra books. And it's just a thrillery style book. I couldn't tell you much about it. I'm excited though. I've, I've been collecting thrillers because I feel like it's gonna be a genre that I get really into at one point. Like once I read my first thriller, I'm just gonna keep wanting to read thrillers, you know? I've just been collecting them and this one looked this one looked cool so now to start the books that I didn't buy for myself and this one was actually gifted to me by one of you guys and that's five dark fates by Kendara Blake this is the finale to the three dark crowns series and I'm really excited to read it I loved three dark crowns the first book amazing phenomenal a work of art I have slowly dwindled my love over the past couple of books but I have high hopes that Kendara Blank blank that Kendara Blake is going to bring it all back, wrap it all up, and give us a really amazing ending. I mean, it's just such a cool premise to the story. Three sisters that have to battle for the crown and to the death. Three triplet sisters. So it's just a really cool situation. There's cool magic and there's a lot of twists and turns in this one. I'm hoping the ending will pull through. I don't know where the little slip went that says who gave it to me, but Thank you to whoever gave it to me. I'm so hyped about this next one. It's actually an ARC, but I believe that it is now out for sale. And that's going to be Dating Makes Perfect by Pintip Dunn. And I actually recently unboxed this in my birthday book haul. I don't know if that video is or my birthday vlog, but don't worry. There's a birthday book haul coming as well. I recently unboxed it in that vlog, so I don't know if that came up before this one or not. It basically follows the younger sister of two twin sisters that are now in college and these twin sisters were never allowed to date in high school. They weren't really interested in it anyways and now in college they're really not interested in it even when their parents are like but you need to find a marriage. They're good. They just want to study. They want to live their life. So now the parents are making it a requirement for the youngest sister to date under the supervision of her twin sisters. I just thought it sounded so cute. As you guys know I'm trying to get more into contemporaries and I feel like this was a good start. 
These next four books I'm going to talk about all together because if you go watch or if you have seen my June TBR video, which I'll link above, I actually talk about these quite a bit in that and these are the other books that I got in the book of the month box for that month and that's going to be A Burning by Mega Majdmar. This one's really really cool. Basically has to do with how three different people's lives are intertwined after a terrorist attack. Home Before Dark by Riley Sager, another like horror thrillery style book which I'm really really excited about. It just seems perfect for any mood but specifically for October spooky season which is coming guys. And this one just seemed really cool. It gave me kind of like Haunting of Hill House vibes so. The Last Flight by Julie Clark. This is another style of thriller where like the wife is running away from her husband. And One to Watch by Kate Stamen London. This one seems so so cute. It's definitely going to be a fun romance novel following a plus sized main character who complains about the fact that all of those bachelor bachelorette style shows only ever show one sort of body type and then she gets invited to be the bachelorette bachelorette for the show. It, they call it something else but it seems really really cute. I'm actually doing a video with this in it so. And the last few books are all going to be books that I actually got in subscription boxes so yeah. We have Girl Serpent and Thorn by Melissa Basherdoust. This seems so freaking cool. Basically there's a princess who is cursed with a touch to kill and then she kind of has to worry if she's more princess or monster or like she's turning into a monster. Where Dreams Descend by Janela Angeles. I'm really excited about this. I still don't know anything about it. It just gives me really strong fandom of the opera vibes but in my unboxing for this book which I got in an owl crate so many of you guys were in the comments telling me that it was an amazing book and that you were really excited for me to read it so I'm I'm looking forward to it. I love fandom of the opera and that's the vibes I'm getting. I don't know much else about it. I don't know anything else about it because no summary. But look at this beautiful dust jacket list book. I love when books get released like this. Or, well, not released, special editions, I guess. These next two are the same book, but different editions. One is going to be the Owl Crate version, and the other one is the Fairy Loot version of Incendiary by Zoretta Cordova. I'm so excited about this. It seems so fun. It's a fantasy, a Spanish inspired fantasy, I believe. So. <laughs> Can't wait, can't wait. And yeah, sometimes it bugs me to get the same book in the subscription boxes, but for the most part, it's just really cool to have two different really fun editions. That's where like the fact that I'm a, more of a book collector than anything else comes into play, I think. Because for me, getting two editions, two special editions of a book is really cool, while I know other people see it as like, well, I would have rather gotten two different books, but I'm a book collector that likes pretty things but also a reader, you know, kind of. Speaking of beautiful things that are special editions, there's this edition of The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. This was actually supposed to be coming out this year and was on my most anticipated releases, but it did get pushed back to next year. So when we got an arc of it in Fairy Loot's box, I was so Oh, hyped. I didn't know it had gotten pushed back until then, so <laughs> I would have been pretty bummed if it never came out. But look at how pretty. Just so stunning. All the foiling, the pages. Like, Fairy Loot did not have to go this hard for an arc, but they did, and I appreciate it. Then we have Witchy by Ariel Slamet Riaz. I actually read this during the reading rush. I adored it. The art style is so cute. The message is phenomenal. The magic is so much fun. The magic is tied to your hair, but we follow a main character whose hair is deemed too long by the government, and we kind of follow her journey. There's definitely going to be more books in the series, and I can't wait to see what they entail. Next to last, we have Forest of Souls by Lori M. Lee. Can we talk about how beautiful, beautiful this edition is? This is the fairy loot edition that came in the box and it's green writing instead of like the gold writing. I was anticipating this book all year. I was so excited when I heard about it. I mean, shaman magic, after reading The Poppy War, that's basically like a trigger word for me. If I hear shaman magic, I want to see what's gonna happen. And it seems like it's gonna have some really strong themes of friendship because our main character accidentally brings her best friend back from the dead and finds out she has that kind of magic, which hasn't been seen in ages. So, so excited that we got a copy of it and that it's so pretty. 
gives me all the Slytherin vibes, you know? And the last book in this haul is going to be Goddess in the Machine by Laura Beth Johnson. This stunning, stunning, stunning edition came in the Owl Crate box. I will say, when I saw how the cover was supposed to be, I really kind of liked the original cover, but I will say that the way that the gold, yellow, orange blends into the gold foiling is beautiful. And in that video, I did mention that the summary for this sounded very Aurora Rising, but I asked you guys if you'd read it, if it ended up being that way, or if it was just the way that the summary was laid out. And so many of you told me that, yes, the summary sounds like it, but the story is nothing like it. So I'm excited to pick it up and read it. We honestly don't get enough sci-fi books in subscription boxes, and I honestly don't read enough sci-fi, so it's always exciting when we get one. Wow, the finished product. We love that. So that's gonna be it for the haul for today. These were all the remaining books that I didn't get to do in my last book haul. If you missed that one, I'll link it up above if I didn't already, but that's kind of it. I know I didn't give very good summaries for these. I don't want to have million year long hauls, which mine tend to be if I give summaries for them, even the most minor ones. I kind of am giving you like the reasons I bought them. So let me know if you loved or hated that style of hauling. I personally had a really good time. And as always, I will leave all the books linked down below in the order of which I talked about them. And you can follow that link to get a better summary if you're more intrigued by it or to buy it if you wanted to. That's really it though. Thank you again to GlassesUSA.com for sponsoring this video. Again, guys, check my description bar down below, not just for the book links, but also if you wanted to check out GlassesUSA.com. And that's kind of it. That's all I really had to talk about today. So fun. <laughs> Thank you all so, so much for watching. I hope you're staying super, super safe. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I hauled today. Again, please let me know if you hated this style of video because I had fun hauling them like this, but if it's not useful to you at all, I'll work on it and look forward to my birthday book haul. I'm not sure when that's going to come out, but hopefully within this month. And there's a lot of beautiful books in that haul to look forward to. So that's all I'm going to say. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I love you all so, so much, and I'll see you in my next one. Goodbye. Oh, yeah. I've dog-eared a page. Oh my gosh, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. I don't know, I feel like nonfiction books, they want to be used. Does, does that make sense? <laughs> that sounds weird, but they do, they do. We're